Welcome to D&D Builds, where we've been able to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons & Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. Today we're going to be building that 500 year old witch with magical attacking hair and diving into Bayonetta. Also, since this build is going to be all about an Umbra witch, what's your favorite pop culture witch? Let me know in the comments down below whether it's from Hocus Pocus, Bewitched, The Witches, Charmed, or going very family friendly with something like Sabrina the Teenage Witch or even Halloween Town. I'm curious to know what your favorite is in the comments down below and I'll let you know my favorite at the end of this video. If you like D&D related content make sure to subscribe I post tons of it and if you want to chat more about it either post it in the comments or join our brand new public discord and if you want the character sheets to any of my builds access to the private discord and plenty of other perks feel free to check out my patreon like these incredibly awesome people. Now let's figure out how to build this witch with these incredibly ridiculous hair powers. First things first we got to pick a race for Bayonetta and considering we need to make sure she's over 500 years old there happens to be a race that doesn't actually have a requirement on the age it's usually tacked on and adjusted to an existing race but you can take it all by itself we're gonna go with a hex blood these are all about the hardcore casting in witches of DD, and it comes from the ravenloft books you get either plus two to one ability score and plus one to another or you can get plus one to three different ability scores which is what we're gonna take you get proficiency in two skills of your choice so we're gonna grab proficiency in persuasion and arcana you also get dark vision with this class and hex magic allowing you to cast the spells disguise self and hex and this race is perfect for being an umbra witch now that we sorted that out let's grab a background and considering she was locked in a coffin for 500 years and treated like a criminal we're gonna take the criminal background whether the imprisonment was justified or not you can still take this background which gives us proficiency in deception and stealth now let's dive into some stats bayonetta is quick can take some hits and insanely charismatic so we're gonna dump strength boost up our dexterity to 15 and get a plus one from our hex blood take our constitution bring it up to 15 and then get another plus one from our hex blood dump our intelligence and our wisdom because we don't need Need those and then take our charisma bump it up to 15 and get another plus one from our hex blood again because you have to be pretty damn charismatic and confident in yourself to essentially be able to fight naked because in case you didn't know most of her casting she actually uses her hair which is also formed around her body creating a suit so when she casts big spells her suit kind of just disappears and with such high charisma and definitely wanting to be a witch-like character we're gonna grab the warlock class when you choose warlock you get access to light armor simple weapons and saving throws in wisdom and charisma you also get two more skills so from what we have left we're gonna grab intimidation because that's pretty useful with your charisma and i was gonna grab history because you're more than 500 years old but you probably didn't get to experience a whole lot of it being locked in a coffin all that time so we'll just grab investigation so you can poke around a little better at level one of warlock you get to choose an otherworldly patron right off the bat also known as a subclass and there's a few great choices for being the witch that you are but considering how bayonetta casts her spells reaching out with her hair and forming big fists or extensions of her own body i think we should go with a fathomless this tends to focus on more underwater type characters but there's a very key feature when you choose to be a fathomless you get tentacle of the deep and this is a spectral tentacle that you can summon as a bonus action it has 10 foot reach and you can constantly attack with it as your bonus action you can move it around to wherever you'd like on the battlefield as long as it's within 60 feet of you and early on in this build it deals 1d8 cold damage and reduces the speed of a creature by 10 feet you also get gift of the sea allowing you some swimming speed up to 40 feet and you can breathe underwater but that part doesn't matter as much focusing on the tentacle you can reflavor that tentacle as an extension of your hair so when you reach out doing those crazy magic hair attacks just use the tentacle in place of that also when you choose to be a warlock you get access to some cantrips and some spells bayonetta does have access to some kick-ass guns so for a cantrip we're gonna grab eldritch blast this upgrades as you level up getting more and more blasts added to it so you can be a bit quicker on the trigger then the only other cantrip i would really focus on is probably told the dead definitely a very witch-like cantrip and it can be very useful as you level up in warlock you can grab some more cantrips so i would grab something like sword burst which i know we're not actually using swords but this does kind of just blast everybody in a nearby radius of you dealing force damage which is very similar to our eldritch blast so you can think of this as when bayonetta does some weird little break dancing and uses her gun shoes blasting everybody right next to her then throw in mage hand 
hand because that way you can reach out with your hair a little more. And if you really want one more thing, just grab friends because she is pretty damn charismatic. As far as first level spells, we already have Hex from being a Hexblood, so the only spell I would probably worry about grabbing is Charm Person because Bayonetta is known to be pretty damn charming. We'll save most other spells we can learn for a minute because Warlocks don't get access to multiple spell slot levels. They only have so many spell slots and they can only cast them at the max level they have available. So we'll worry about other spells when our spell slot gets upgraded. At second level of Warlock, you get Eldritch Invocations. So we're going to grab Agonizing Blast, allowing you to add your Charisma modifier to every single blast from your Eldritch Blast cantrip. At this level, you only have one blast when you cast the cantrip, but as you level up, you get more and more blasts, and that charisma modifier gets added to each and every one of them. Then I would take Armor of Shadows, because your armor isn't really there, so we don't want to worry about wearing leather armor. It's part of your magic hair. So Armor of Shadows allows you to cast Mage Armor on yourself at will, without expending a spell slot. Then at third level of Warlock, you get access to a second level spell slot, and you get a Pact Boon. Bayonetta is pretty quick at dashing around the battlefield, so we're going to grab Mist step from this spell level and grab hold person which you can think of as her hair just locking onto somebody and holding them in place as far as the pack boon since bayonetta does have a few amount of accessories she can upgrade within the games we're going to grab the boon pact of the talisman this allows you to add a d4 to any ability check that you use at least as many times as your proficiency bonus then at fourth level of warlock we get access to an ability score improvement so we're going to boost up our charisma by two points and then at fifth level of warlock you get access to another invocation and your spell slots get upgraded to level three so I would grab the spell Fly because I don't think there's any other way you can pull off some of the crazy moves that she does. And I would grab the spell Summon Lesser Demons because she does manage to do that in the games. It's usually just to finish off an enemy, but she does have the ability called Summoning Infernals. And I think Summoning Demons is pretty much the same thing. Just be careful because in D&D, when you summon demons, they can attack you too. So make sure to be charming as hell and put that charisma to good use. As far as the invocation at this level, I would grab Repelling Blast. This allows you to push a creature up to 10 feet away from you in a straight line when you hit them with an Eldritch Blast. And at this level, you have access to two blasts when you cast that cantrip, so you can push it up to 20 feet away. Then at 6th level of Warlock, you get a feature from your Fathomless subclass, and it's called Oceanic Soul. You now have resistance to cold damage, which is really going to come in handy because you do fight naked a significant amount of the time, so dealing with the cold just comes with the job. You also have the ability to understand any creature while being completely underwater and being able to speak very easily underwater, which I guess is helpful for chanting spells while submerged but otherwise it doesn't really play into the character very much. Additionally, you get the feature Guardian Coil. So now that tentacle that you summon, or part of your hair, can block a portion of damage that would have hit you. So you can use this as a bit of a shield to help keep you alive. At 7th level of Warlock, your spell slots get upgraded to level 4, and you get another invocation. As far as the spells, we're going to keep with the theme, grab Charm Monster, so you can charm more types of creatures, and we're going to grab the spell Summon Greater Demon. So now when you do your Summoning Infernals, to finish off an enemy, you can summon a demon much more powerful. As far as an invocation, we're going to boost up those guns even more and grab Lance of Lethargy. And now, since you already have Repelling Blast, allowing you to push those creatures further away with your blast, you can also reduce their speed. Lance of Lethargy allows you to reduce a creature's speed by 10 feet when you hit it with an Eldritch Blast, but you can only do this once per turn. So you can push it plenty far away, and you can keep it farther away by slowing it down. Then at 8th level of Warlock, we get another ability score improvement, so we're going to max out our Charisma, making it so our casting is as strong as it can probably get on its own. Then at 9th level of Warlock, we get access to a 5th level spell slot. I would grab Far Step, allowing you to dash around the battlefield much better. It's essentially like Misty Step, but you can hang on to it and keep casting it over and over as your bonus action. Then I would really lean into upgrading those other spells we already have, upgrading our Hold Person spell into Hold Monster, which we now have access to at 5th level, and and grab Infernal Calling, really leaning into that Summoning Infernals. The one other spell we get to grab is actually from the Fathomless spell list. It's Bigby's Hand, because you are reaching out with your hair and recreating giant body parts, and I don't think anything is more fitting than Bigby's Hand in that situation. Granted, being a Fathomless makes it appear as a tentacle, but that's just a bit of flavor, so we can just as easily reflavor it back to what we want. This allows you to use a giant summoned hand to either grab people, punch people, or block people from going in a direction you don't want them to. This is frankly one of my favorite spells in D&D. And for our Eldritch Invocation, 
just to boost up our guns a tiny bit more. Let's grab Eldritch Spear, that way you have a bit more long range with those pistols, even though that kind of doesn't make sense because pistols are inherently short range. It will boost the range of your Eldritch Blast all the way to 300 feet. So if you mix that with your Repelling Blast and your Lance of Lethargy, it's really going to take a hell of a long time for any enemy to get anywhere close to you. Then at 10th level of Warlock, you get another feature from being a Fathomless. You get Grasping Tentacles, giving you access to the spell Avard's Black Tentacles. And you can cast it once without using your spell slots. You can think of this as either a bunch of demons coming up and grabbing your enemies, or your magical hair reaching down and grabbing tons of your enemies and holding them in place for you to blast them with your magic guns. Granted, this does cover a large area, so as far as your hair suit goes, that's pretty much going to make you completely naked. So it's a good thing that you have resistance to cold. At 11th level of Warlock, you get access to a Mystic Arcanum, which is a special type of spell slot that only refills on a long rest, as opposed to your other spell slots that refill on any short rest. This is only access to a 6th level spell, so we're going to stick with the theme and grab Summon Fiend. Just another way to utilize your ability to summon Infernals. Then at 12th level of Warlock, you get access to another ability score improvement, and we're going to boost our dexterity up by 2 points, because you are pretty nimble, and this will make you a bit harder to hit, increasing your armor class. Also at this level, you get one more invocation, and since Bayonetta does have some abilities to control time, at least in the games, we're going to grab Mire of the Mind. This allows you to cast slow, once per long rest using a warlock spell slot. And this is the best way we can recreate getting access to that witch time you have in the Bayonetta games. Then at 13th level, we get another Mystic Arcanum, which is a 7th level spell this time. We could grab Force Cage, but that does feel a bit more like what happened to Bayonetta as she was locked up for 500 years. So we just want to get a little bit more dark and witchy with Finger of Death. This is just purely a dark and sinister kind of witch spell, and there's no other way to justify it. You can point at a creature and deal a crap ton of necrotic damage, and if you kill a humanoid with this spell, it raises up as a zombie afterwards. At 14th level, you get access to another feature from being a Fathomless. It's called Fathomless Plunge, allowing you to teleport to a nearby body of water along with your party, but that doesn't really play into the Bayonetta theme too much, so we're just going to ignore it. Then at 15th level, you get access to an 8th level Mystic Arcanum. So we're going to lean into some of the spells we already had earlier, and we're going to grab Dominate Monster for some mind control, but you can think of this as you being exceptionally charming. You can also use something like Feeble Mind if you really wanted to, and just think of this as being unreasonably sexual to the point that you've just completely flabbergasted some onlooker. You also get one more invocation at this level, and we're going to make you use of that talisman or the accessories that you have the ability to upgrade, grabbing protection of the talisman, allowing you to add a d4 to any saving throw that you roll. Then at 16th level, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to max out our dexterity, which increases our AC as much as we can really get as a warlock. Then at 17th level, we get a 9th level Mystic Arcanum, and we're going to grab the spell Shape Change, because in the games, Bayonetta does have the ability beast within, allowing her to change into a handful of other forms. So shape change is the best way we can pull that off. An alternative to that, if you just wanted to go purely based off of your existing abilities, you could grab Foresight. It's an insanely good spell and it just gives you advantage on pretty much everything while giving your enemies disadvantage on anything against you. Then at 18th level of Warlock, you get access to one more invocation. So we're just going to upgrade those accessories one more time, giving you Rebuke of the Talisman, allowing you to deal some psychic damage to anybody that attacks you while you're wearing your very nice jewelry and push them 10 feet away. And then if you mix that with your Repelling Blasts after they're already pushed 10 feet away from you from your Rebuke, you can just continue to keep pushing them further and further away, keeping you at a safe distance. Then at 19th level, you get another ability score improvement, so we're just going to boost up our Constitution because this increases our health and our concentration on spells. Then at 20th level, which is the max level of the character, you get... Eldritch Master. At max level of Warlock, you only have four spell slots you can use per short rest. Eldritch Master allows you to regain those spell slots a little quicker. It's not the most useful 20th level ability out of most classes, but it didn't really make sense to do a multi-class when it comes to Bayonetta. So we're just going to max her out with Eldritch Master. I really want to do this build just because I know Bayonetta 3 is going to be coming out in the near future, and I had some fun playing these games. Not to mention she's a character in Smash, and I've done plenty of other Smash characters in the past. Let me know what you thought of this build in the comments down below, or if you want any completely different build, let me know there as well. I try and read as many of the comments as possible. And if you want to chat even more about D&D stuff with the entire community, we have a new Discord we just added. Check out the link to 
that Discord in the description down below. Also, I told you to let me know your favorite pop culture reference to witches. And personally, my favorite is The Craft. It's a really cool depiction from the 90s while mixing in a bit of teen angst. If you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds or plenty of other perks, feel free to check out the other link in my description, which is my Patreon. And you can be just as epically awesome as these people here. They're my patrons and they help me do this stuff. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session. Especially if you want to go into battle wearing nothing but a hair suit that essentially disappears and you fight naked while creating giant magical hair constructs and summoning demons. Because that's the extremely ridiculous world of Bayonetta.